All right, I thought I'd just try something a little bit different for today's video. Uh, I actually just jumped on Chat G GPT, which is, uh, you know, I'm sure you've heard of it. If not, it's uh, basically an AI chatbot that you can kind of, you know, talk to and ask some questions. And I just thought, um, you know, it might be fun to, to talk about solar generators with this thing, right? So I just as, actually just asked it, you know, what are the basically the top five complaints people have with solar generators? And this is what it came up with. So in this video, I'm just going go to go through this like real quick and just kind of go through this list and kind of a, address all of the things that they brought up. So number one, insufficient capacity. Some users have reported that their solar generators have insufficient capacity to power all of their devices, particularly at extended periods, right? So this is this is absolutely true. I mean, even if you got like a big unit like this, like the like the Delta Pro, right? This thing is, is over 3000 uh, watt hours, right? So the 3600 watt hours. Uh, 3.6 kilowatt hours, right? And this thing is a beast, right? This thing's a, a hundred pounds or so. And so, you know, you might think, you know, with a big heavy unit like this, you know, this thing's going to be capable of doing quite a lot. And, and it, it is, it is, it really is. You know, if you're smart about how you're using the power on these things, that's just kind of one of the things I like to talk about on this channel is, is just being smart, trying to be uh, more efficient with, with uh, the devices that you're using, right? So, you know, but the thing is, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, if you're not smart, uh, you know, guess what? If you actually like were to plug in like this, you know, 1500 watt electric heater, ceramic heater, you know, guess what? You're only going to get like a couple of hours of runtime on, on something like this, right? And the battery is just going to be flat after that. So when you're talking about big loads, you know, you basically, you're only going to be running, want to run big loads for a short amount of time, right? Short bursts, you know, if you got a hair dryer or if you're doing some cooking or stuff like that you know, 10, 15 minutes here and there, you can do a lot of that, you know, with, with a big system like this. It's just, you're not going to be running for hours, you know, a couple hours at a time. Now, another important thing to consider is, and a lot of companies will actually recommend this, is that because of there's, there's losses with these units, right? Especially when you're using the AC inverter and there's, there's just always conversion losses. So a lot of these companies will recommend multiplying the capacity by, by, by 0.85 or 85%. And this is just always a good idea, like, and again, no matter like what power station you have. So in this case, the Delta Pro, you know, we have the, the capacity is actually 3,600 watt hours. But if you actually multiply that by what they recommend, you can see that realistically, you, you've only got about 3,000 watt hours that, that you can use. So this is just another good idea. And just kind of, it kind of helps um, with your expectations of, you know, what, what kind of power you're going to pull out of this thing, right? All right, number two, slow charging. Another common complaint is that solar generators can take too long to charge, particularly in cloudy or low light conditions. So this is specifically, you know, addressing the, the solar aspect of it, right? So this is exactly why you want to check the solar specs on these power stations. Now they're getting better and better, you know, with this grow watt, this thing can actually do 800 watts, which is pretty good for, you know, a pretty small portable unit. Um, so you always want to kind of check the solar, solar specs on these things and the things you want to look for is you, you obviously want to look for, you know, the most watts going in, but you also want to look for the uh, the voltage range. This, this can make just charging with solar so much easier, right? So again, with this grow watt, it actually has very good specs, um, 800 watts. So that's a pretty good number. I would look for anything like above four or 500 watts. And then this grow watt can actually do up to 100 volts. Um, voltage range. So that just means when you're when you're hooking up multiple panels, it's just going to be a lot easier if you don't have to worry about going over voltage with them. Because when you hook them all up together in series, you're, you're going to be adding all those voltages, right? And uh, you can do stuff in parallel. It's just a little bit more difficult. So I would just look for basically 400, 500 watts, and then like um, 40, 50, 60 volts or higher. Uh, for solar specs and then the other thing that you can do which uh, which this illustration is actually good for as well is um, Over paneling this is just always an excellent idea um, Because again like they said with the clouds and stuff like that and just sometimes, you know The Sun is not ideal. So this is again where you want to kind of look at the voltage um, Basically the on the solar panels VOC is what you want to look at um, this is the open circuit voltage. And so basically you want to keep it, you actually got to keep it below whatever your power station's voltage limit is, right? So, um, but you know, as long as you do that, you can string as many solar panels as you want together. Like, like you don't have to, don't look at the watts. The watts doesn't matter. You know, in this case, this unit can do um, 800 watts of solar. You could even put, you know, 2000 watts of solar panels into this thing. 
you would just have to make sure that you're doing um you're, you're hooking stuff up in parallel and you know ultimately at the end of the day that you keep the voltage below the voltage uh limit of this thing right so just a lot of parallel connections but you can always do more watts so you know even if it's cloudy if you got 2000 watts of solar panels you're still going to be getting some good charge so that's just just over paneling and you know just making sure that your power station has some pretty decent specs to work with all right number three limited lifespan some users have reported that their solar generators do not last as long as they expected with some components failing after just a few years and so this definitely is true but you know obviously this is going to vary depending on brands um, you know, basically there's a couple of things you want to look for, right? I mean, Jackery is kind of one of the, the brands that I would say is, seems to be the most reliable. I mean, look at these ratings here. And this is, a, this is one of their older units as well. And that's just something, um, again, that you might want to consider because, you know, it's tempting to kind of jump into some of these brand new units that have all these new features and stuff like that. But, um, you know, you are kind of taking a gamble with that. With, a, with an older unit that's kind of been out on the market, you know, for a while, you know, even if it did have some some issues at the beginning, they probably ironed out all of those issues, right? So, um, so the, there's definitely an advantage to kind of getting a, a more proven uh, product that's kind of been out. And, you know, especially when you can have the opportunity to take a look at um, a lot of the reviews and stuff like that as well. All right, number four, inefficient energy conversion. Some users have reported that their solar gener generators are not very efficient at converting solar energy into usable electricity resulting in slower times and decreased overall performance. So obviously this is related to number two, but this, you know, they're probably talking more about the charge controllers than MPPTs. And here's a nice little chart that I found from sunstore.co.uk. And basically it just shows the MPPT versus the older PWM. And as you can see here, I mean, the resolution on this picture is not very good, but basically this is just in full sun. This is in, uh, you know, just a little bit of shading. And then this is like real heavy shading. And the green, the bright green is the MPPT. And so, you know, as you can see, you are going to get a little bit more power, um, you know, basically in, in perfect conditions. And in, in not so perfect conditions, you, you, you notice that you do get quite a significant bump, right? And then actually it's interesting in, in very poor conditions, they actually show that the PWM does actually a little bit better, which I've kind of seen too, right? I mean, sometimes these MPPTs, they don't like charging at just like one or two watts. They'll kind of do this thing with the, the like reset, you know, over and over and stuff like that. But it doesn't really matter. I mean, at, at this level, you're getting almost nothing anyways. But yeah, so, you know, but basically you always want to look for MPPT if you are looking for an older or a more budget power station, um, you know, and you want to use it with solar, right? And just, that's just something I would still look for. Um, basically all of the newer units that, is, especially from the name brands and stuff like that, they all have MPPT now. All right, and now lastly, heavy and bulky. And this is, this is probably my biggest complaint with these things. So some solar generators can be quite heavy and bulky, making them difficult to transport and store, particularly for those, those who are looking for a portable solution. So, so that's definitely me. Um, you know, weight has always been a big factor with me. And, you know, if you follow the channel, you'll see that um, basically all the power stations that I've had have been NMC, NMC batteries. And I still think, you know, I still think there, there is some, um, some, some merit to having NMC because of the, the weight issue, especially in certain size classes like this Jackery 1500 watt hours, you know, basically this thing actually weighs only like 35 pounds or so. So that it's quite manageable for that capacity and having a pretty big inverter. And then these companies are coming up with other solutions to kind of make the, the weight a little bit more manageable as well, right? I mean, you've got the wheels and the handle that's kind of suitcase style. And you've also got like the, like the new Anchor 767. And again, you know, these units here, you know, they're about 60 pounds or so. And then with the wheels and the handle, you know, it does make it quite easy. It does make that, that portability issue a little bit better. But, you know, if you do have to still lift these things up, um, it, you know, that can still be a little bit difficult, right? So the thing that I really like about um, the other solution to this problem is kind of these um, split units or parallel units. So like this Delta II, and actually <laughs> I, I just got um, a Delta II. So this will, I'll be talking about this unit a little bit more on my channel. Um, but basically, you know, if this, you know, point number five, like, like the, the, the weight and, and stuff like that is, is a really big issue with you. I don't think there's anything better on the market than this Delta II because this thing only weighs about 26 pounds. It's got, you know, 1800 watt inverter. That's all you, that's all you really need for most stuff. And, um, you know, basically 500 watts of solar, this thing, you know, in a small, and it's LFP battery too, LFP battery. Somehow they managed to make this thing 
have the, about the same amount of weight as, as most of the competition, the NMC competition does. So just um, incredible job. And then if you do need, you know, more capacity, because it is limited on capacity a little bit, you know, that's why they have the, uh, oh, that's why they have the, you know, basically the extra battery. So this is what I would call a split system, you know, so with this, with the extra battery, then you get 2000 watt hours and you get all the other specs that you need. Um, you know, and then the thing is you can lift these independently. This is, this is why I just love this setup. Now the downside to this setup is the extra battery is basically dead weight, right? <laughs> if you don't have it connected to the main unit, the Delta II, um, it basically won't serve you any good. So that's where, you know, it can be better to do like a parallel system. This is the Vigorpool Captain 1200. And, you know, what's really nice about these parallel systems is not only do you get to split up the weight like that, but, um, you know, basically the parallel system is using two of the main units. So there's no like dedicated extra battery. And what that means is, is not only can you hook these things up together as they show and you double the capacity basically, and you, and you also double the inverter size. So this is real nice if you're looking for solutions, you know, kind of more portable, lightweight solutions that can still give you big AC power. But yeah, hopefully that just kind of answers some of your, your questions and your concerns about these things, right? If, if you agree with some of the, the stuff on this list. And uh, hopefully you just kind of found this video helpful or, or interesting at least. And yeah, thanks for watching.